Shaco Hee Hee. If you start to learn how to use some of these tools instead of advising your daughter to use them, it'll be more powerful, right? Because if she sees you using these tools, then in her mind, she'll say, oh, not only do you value them because you're using them, but if she sees you improving your own personal skills rapidly, I think she'll be intrigued. She'll be intrigued enough to try them. It's like monkey see, monkey do technique. When I coached, when I was the assistant soccer coach of a college of, of a college team, Salve Regina, I would bring this kick trainer and I would bring this RMT rope to practice and use it almost every day. And by the end of the season, players started to pick up these tools and interact with them without me saying a single word. So I think if you yourself bring a tennis ball with you everywhere you go and start to improve your own personal juggling and you bring an RMT rope and you invest in a kick trainer for yourself, it'll create joy with your daughter because, because if you can get to a point when you can juggle a balloon, a hacky sack with your daughter, th there's... I've traveled the world with my parents and both of them are pretty athletic, but they didn't spend 60 seconds a day learning how to juggle. And this is one thing that we could have done together. Tournaments all over the world, playing all over the world. If we would have just juggled with each other for 60 seconds, it would have created so much more joy. Not that things weren't fun, but this is such a small thing that can help you improve not only your own personal game, her game, right? It's like the pre-warm-up, right? You get to the field, n no one's there yet, maybe you're 10, 15 minutes early. To get a ball and a juggle, there's just infinite joy that you can that you can experience with her. And maybe she leaves, leaves for college and you call it a year or two and maybe sh she's, she's close. So, so I think it's something that you could do together with each other for the rest of your lives. And I'm gonna assume that you're healthy and not incapacitated right in, in a wheelchair or have maybe one leg or something but but the whole point is that that if you just tell her to use these tools it might not translate into her into her using them and it actually might do the opposite right because maybe subconsciously she, she's thinking she's thinking well she, she, maybe she could think well she, she's saying that she, she could think that maybe you're saying behind the words are your training's not good enough and that these things will be better to use and because right the, the way she'd take it might take away from the goal which is how do we how do we train smarter in a fun way so the more that you use these tools the, the more she'll respond because you're valuing them by using them so let me just give you a quick demo this is a, just a piece of rope that you get at your local hardware store or West Marine if you have one, right? As long as you are tall. And the reason, the reason why it's so powerful is because it's so simple. You just swing it in a circle, right? Swing, move, breathe, switch hands, right? And so, you know, let's say you go watch your play. You could bring this on the sideline and just swing it and move, breathe, swing, move, breathe, get into a one-legged balance, right? You could do some, some skips, and then you're gonna start to, you could go behind the back, right? You could go high. It's like exploring, It's ex you explore your own movement of your body, and you start to feel, where is tension? Where is the tension in my body? And just to see how things feel, both hands, left, right, breathing. And what this is going to do is it's going to improve anyone who uses it. It's, they're going to improve their timing, their rhythm, their coordination, their balance. What's going to happen? I noticed when I started using it, my juggling improved, which improved my ball striking, which improved my passing and my shooting. It's almost like every single part of your game will improve as you swing this around in circles. So um, for 10 bucks, it behooves you to try it out, right? I, this is some the one tool that I wish I want to learn how to you do years ago, right? I've been playing soccer for 27 years. I just figured out how to 
used one of these in the past year or so and I'm now 10 times better than I was 10 years ago. The next thing is a kick trainer, right? Just a size one ball on a rope. And this is powerful because you could cram months of training into days or weeks. It shortens down your training, your necessary, your your training time because because you could you could get so many repetitions and really work on your striking technique and again timing rhythm coordination balance inside the foot outside the foot right first touch behind the back it's just a it, it makes it so that you don't have to go to a wall to use it you don't have to you don't have to wait for a training partner in your comfort of your own home even if you have to be quiet and you maybe you're worried about breaking something this is great for beginners and advanced players because it just allows you to get a lot of touches and explore right it just helps you improve your awareness on the ball when you strike it so you could just get rapid you know striking technique just nice getting a lot of touches breathing people think that this is just a child's tool it's not it's a it's hyper efficient soccer training because it's lightweight portable and cheap right you can make one yourself size one ball a length of rope a little shorter than your hip bone to your ankle bone and some duct tape and boom you got yourself a kick trainer this one's pretty cheap though sklz solo kick trainer so if you start using it and you set it to your daughter's height so if you get this in the mail and set the length of it to where it's for your daughter's size, but you're the one who's using it. You can make it conducive. You can make it easy for her to pick up and it'd be the perfect, perfect height. So there's no wrong way to do it. You just get a lot of touches, shins, knees, insides, outsides, laces, heel, right? Anything you want, you get a lot of touches, have a lot of fun. The third thing is, like I said, if you start to bring a tennis ball, a hacky sack with yourself and get to a point where you just, you can just keep a ball up for a few times, right? Starting right here, thigh catch, thigh catch, thigh catch, thigh catch. If you can get to a point when you could juggle with your daughter, right? Just develop your own personal juggling habit. 60 seconds a day, you will create so much joy between the, between the two of you. You'll be wondering how come you didn't do it sooner? So hopefully some of these ideas help. Uh, and the last two things I'll suggest are the, the gold medal, the gold medal coach, the strength coach who has the most gold medals of any strength coach in the world says that using a foam roller to roll out muscles creates scar tissue. So he says he doesn't, he doesn't suggest his athletes use a, a roller. He said they only use he only suggests using a foam roller to traction out the spine, but not to roll out the muscles. And the second thing he says that for hip thrusters, he says hip thrusters are actually like training to have to have intercourse with an overweight person, right? If you think about what hip thruster, thrusters look like, if you're laying on the ground and, right, it, it's it's he basically calls it a waste of time. He said you get more benefit from doing a box squat or a deadlift. That's what he claims. So I don't know what you want to do with that information, um, but reach out with any questions and hope this, hopefully this helps. All right, thank you.